Welcome back to DVC Weekly. This is episode 19. My name is Jason Erpelding. I'm the broker of Buy and Sell DVC. With me, of course, is Scott Ferrioli. The owner of DVC-Rental.com and BuyAndSellDVC.com. Uh, today is June 16th, 2021. So your 11-month window for your home resort is going to be May 16th, 2022, which is also... My dad's birthday, so happy birthday 11 months in advance to my dad. Happy birthday. And the seven-month window is going to be uh, January 16th, uh, 2022. Now, quick, as always, if you're looking to rent points, rent out your points, it's DVC-Rental. Remember the dash to save the cash. And if you're looking to sell or buy a DVC property, you want to come to Buy and Sell DVC. Uh, today we're gonna ha- we're gonna start out with uh, our first guest that is going to share their personal experience and how they use their Disney Vacation Club points. Live guest? It's not a live guest. Oh, all right. Um, there, there is one possibly coming up in a few weeks, though, right? Uh, I believe so. Possibly we might have a live guest on with us. Ooh. Um, so this is King Egg Ingraham, and he's gonna share a little video on how he uses points, uh, some different things. So uh, we hope you enjoy. And again, if you want to share any tips or your personal experiences, uh, please reach out to me at jason at buyandselldvc.com and I can uh, send you an info on on how to set that up. So uh, let's enjoy King's video here. Love the King. Great guy. Hi, folks. My name is King, also known as King of Miami on YouTube and Instagram and other social media platforms. My wife and I have been DVC members since 2007. We have a 50 point contract at the Boulder Ridge Villas within the Wilderness Lodge Resort. We were asked by the good people of Buy and Sell DVC to explain how we use our membership, especially seeing that we have a smaller point contract. We actually bought our our contract, as I said, back in 2007, but we actually got it through Jason Erpelding at the time. Uh, He did a great job, answered all of our questions, made sure that everything we were comfortable with through the the process. Once we became members, we've only stayed at Wilderness Lodge or Boulder Ridge Villas rather twice, the last time being in 2012. The rest of the time, when I book a resort, I book at the 11 month window and then once at, at Boulder Ridge Villas. Once we hit the seven month window, I go ahead and wait list us to whatever other resort that we want to get into. And except for two times, both of which trying to book the villas at Grand Floridian, we got our, our request at the seven month, within a month of the seven month window opening. So we have stayed at Bay Lake Tower, Bold, uh, Boardwalk, Beach Club Villas. We've stayed at all of the resorts again, except for Grand Floridian. Copper Creek, and then also Riviera. But very, very simple, folks. I book it online at the 11-month window. Once we hit that seven-month window, I have gone through almost every time with just waitlisting the resort. And again, within a couple of weeks to about a month or so, our waitlist has come in, except, like I said, for Grand Floridian. A couple of times... I did call member services to ask them to to make that switch. But for the most part, I just do it online so I don't have to wait on hold. Even though the folks, of course, at BBC member services are fantastic. A lot of the times I'm doing it while I'm on my lunch break, for example. But very simple. We we bank and borrow because we normally take a trip maybe once a year, more often than not every other year. So I've become rather adept at banking and borrowing our points and we make the most of it and we have a wonderful time every time that we're there. So anytime, if you have any questions, please, you're more than welcome to reach out to me on, like I said, on YouTube or Instagram, it's King O Miami. Good friends with with Scott Ferrioli for several years. He's a stand up guy. I would happily do business with him. Hopefully the time's coming soon that we're gonna look to add on points and we will most certainly look to speak with uh, Scott and Jason when that time does arise. Have a great day, folks, and welcome home. 
So, uh, so I hope you enjoyed his video on how he uses his membership. And we're going to go right into um, waitlisting because if you, the one thing from King's video is he owns at Boulder Ridge. He likes to make his reservation at Boulder Ridge seven to 11 months in advance. He probably makes it right at 11 months. And then once it's under seven months, he likes to wait list, um, you know, the other properties. I, I'm not sure if he mentioned the video or he's mentioned to us in the past. He's only stayed at Boulder Ridge twice, I think. Something like that, yeah. Since 2007. So, and I know on the different Facebook groups, a lot of times the wait list questions come up. So I'm going to shoot some questions at you on the wait list because I think that you're a little, you're our wait list expert. I think we're using the term expert loosely here, but yeah. I, I've done wait lists before for clients and mostly our own family. So, so, uh, so let's use an example. Let's just say, uh, we'll, we'll say King makes a reservation for Boulder Ridge. We'll say he makes it 11 months in advance. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I guess the first question is, he can't begin a wait list until it's under seven months, or can he? Correct. Even? Okay. Correct. You have to wait to the seven month window to to set up the wait list for the okay. for the other resort. So now he wants to wait list. Let's say he wants to wait list three different resorts: Boardwalk, Beach Club, and we'll say uh, Polynesian. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Uh, just yeah, the first thing is you're only allowed to have two wait lists. Okay. So you'd have to pick which two you want to wait list for. I set them up for that, see? I wasn't sure. See, again, we don't go over this a lot of times. So I was like, does Jason know it's only two or is he setting it up here? Nicely done. Beautiful setup. So yeah, when it's time to wait list, you could set up up to two, two wait lists at a time. And you have the choice to wait list for either um, to have the wait list cancel 31 days prior to, to arrival or seven days prior to arrival. And the reason is, um, if you cancel a reservation less than 31 days in advance, any leftover points go into a holding account, which means that they can only be used for reservations up to two months in advance. So once points go into holding, essentially they're really hard to use. So if you're going to set up a wait list for a room that's less points than what you currently have, you really would want to do it before the 31, you want to have it set up for 31 days because that way the points don't go into holding. If you wait to the seven days prior, you might have a better chance of getting the wait list because they'll have a last minute cancellations. But if you've got a wait list for 100 points, well, so your reservation is for 100 points and the wait list is for an 80 point reservation and it comes through 10 days before check-in, all those extra points go into holding. So you, you definitely want to do it for the 31 day mark. Anything that's more points than what you currently have, you're definitely safe for these seven day prior to arrival because worst case scenario, it uses the points and there's there's no holding because you're, you're using the additional points. And then I think this is the first time that we've ever used the term hold status in any of our videos. So I just want to so. just touch on that real quick. So like he says, if your points go into hold status, I, I've had my fingers here, this is my 60 day window. Mm -hmm. They have to be used in a 60 day window, which keeps moving. So. If you have points in hold status and it is June 16th, your reservation has to be between June 16th and August 16th or August 15th. Yeah, correct. So, um, that, that's the window and it just keeps moving. So if you check June 30th, it's then August 29th. So that's, that's the hold status. You're trying to avoid the hold status because again they have to be used in that 60 day floating window and, and they have to be used by the end of your use year you bingo. can't bank them exactly things like that i was just gonna mention that so good good call so so now we'll go back to the wait list so you can pick two resorts mm -hmm. and well, you, two, two two not just two resorts just two options so it's not like you could say you know i'll take animal kingdom standard savannah value view and beach club you know regular option you only have two wait lists total. So if you say you want Animal Kingdom, you know, the standard view and the Savannah view, those are your two wait lists. Even though it's the same exact resort, you know, you, you've, you've waste, wasted them both just on the, that one option. Okay. So now you have two. So do you pick one as priority number one? Um, you do not. It's which, whichever one happens to come through. Okay. So I'm trying to think now, like if one comes through, I think, yeah, the other wait list automatically should cancel unless you have it set up in advance not to. So a little, little, little trickier stuff, but yeah, it's just kind of whichever one comes through. And you want to make sure that you have it checked. So again, back to King, he has a Boulder Ridge reservation. 
And then you check it so the way this comes through, that Boulder Ridge reservation is canceled. Correct. There's the option to not do that if you don't want to. For some reason, if you want an additional room, you can get that second room and not cancel the original reservation. But as King would do, if he's just, you know, he's at Boulder Ridge and wants to go to, um, I forgot which resort you picked, but. Uh, I, I, I think know, I, I know he loves Beach Club, so he wants okay. to go to Beach Club. You know, yeah, you just want to set it up so it does cancel that reservation so you're not sitting there holding two reservations by accident. And let's see, what, what else should we cover on wait list? Because, oh, so the other question is, so if your wait list comes through, do you sometimes get an email? That, that seems to be the case. I mean, you're supposed to get an email from Disney Vacation Club to let you know that your wait list come, has come through. It really just depends how great the Disney system is working. You know, we've seen people that have not gotten their emails. You just have to like randomly check on your dashboard, on your DVC page to see the waitlist come through. But Disney is supposed to send you an email as well. They, they used to send out um, letters, physical letters in the mail. They no longer do that. So it's supposed to go to your email. But if you're worried, I would check periodically as well. And then it, it's, it's simple to just, let's say King has the Boulder Ridge. He waitlist two properties. But then he says, you know what, I just want to stay at Boulder Ridge. It's simple to cancel your oh, waitlist. Yeah. It's just, yeah, just log in and, and just clicking a button to cancel the waitlist. And one thing I will mention as well, that if you do have the waitlist and you, if you're better at computers, not that you have to be super computer literate for this, but a lot of times when the wait, when somebody cancels a room, it's supposed to automatically go through and check people who are on the waitlist for the reservations. However, Disney system doesn't automatically do it, or sometimes it's not. A, an immediate thing. So sometimes, you know, you, if King has a wait list for Beach Club, somebody could cancel the room and you could log into the DVC site and that Beach Club room could still be sitting there and the wait list will not have gone through. So if you have a wait list and you, you, know, you want to be a little proactive, periodically check the Disney site as well because sometimes it could possibly be there without filling your wait list. So you may want to manually grab the room if possible. So then the other tricky part is, so let's say, I, let's say a member owns at Grand Cal, Saratoga, and Copper Creek. And they want a wait list. And if the wait list comes through, they want Disney to use the Saratoga Springs points because they, they want to keep their Grand Cal so they have that seven to 11 month window points for Grand Cal. So any tips on that or? Yeah, that, that one definitely can be trickier if you have multiple contracts under the same exact membership. So the best thing to do would be, at, at that case, when you put in your wait list, to call Disney for that one. Don't set it up online because I believe Disney's system automatically uses the points that are expiring first. If they're under the same membership, they all expire at the same time. But if you've got banked points, it's, in theory, it's supposed to use those first. But you know, if you want to use those Saratogas and not the Grand Californians, and the Grand Californians are the ones with the banked points, in theory, it's going to use those first. So the best thing to do would be to call Disney on the phone and specifically set it up and say, hey, you know, Please use, you know, the Saratoga points if this becomes available. There is a chance that afterwards, if it goes through with the wrong points, you can call Disney and have them reallocate the points for you. But safest bet, just call Disney when you do the wait list. That way it's, it's set up exactly how you want it. And you don't have to worry about any issues. And then the other thing with the wait list is if you do a wait list and you know it's going to borrow points, you know, you know you're going to have to borrow points to complete the reservation if it comes through. When you make the wait list, there's a screen or something that pops up, correct, that says, be aware you're going to be borrowing. Correct. Yep. Waitlisting is a little, it's a tricky one. And that's why a lot of times it shows up on Facebook message boards and stuff like that, because there's so many different intricacies and there's different, different results that happen. It's just, it's a, it's a trickier subject. So it's, it's always good to try to address it. And I mean, again, anything can happen with the Disney system, you know, maybe the email comes through, maybe it doesn't, maybe it uses the wrong points, maybe it doesn't. But I mean, that's basically how the wait lists work. And it's, it's just something good, I think, that, we, that you decided to bring up and address today. And I, and I think the key things to remember are, if you're waitlisting for something that's going to require less points, you want to set it up so that the waitlist stops searching uh, more than 31 days in advance. That way, you don't run into any points and hold status. Yeah, that, that's the main thing. A lot of people get messed up with that one. Is yeah, you know, a lot, as an example, like Animal Kingdom, like everybody wants the value views because they're such a, a great deal. You know, you, you've got the standard view and you waitlist the value and you go, okay, you know, seven days in advance will increase my chances of getting it. I'll, I'll wait till closer. You don't realize that you're going to be using less points and now all those extra points are 
are in holding and it really messes you up. So that, yeah, that's probably the best thing to take away is that be careful of which 31 day or seven day option you select. And of course you can always, if, if someone was really trying to get that value and they had a reservation someplace else, say for six nights, and then they put the wait list for the value at five nights, so it would be less points. They can do that as well, correct? Correct. I think so. I actually, I think, I'm not 100% sure. I, th I think that's the case. But so in that scenario, that would be you know, less days and less points. So do you mean to like reverse those? Or? Well, so I was, because let's say someone really wanted that value. Mm -hmm. And so they knew that if they picked, uh, fewer days at, in the value, then they, would, they the wouldn't get points in hold status if they waited till up to the seven day mark before. Well, if they, if they, did, if they did less days in the value, which is already cheaper, less oh, nights would be sorry, even I mean, cheaper not, points. Right, I didn't mean, yeah, that's, that, yeah, I did have that backwards. Yes, okay. they would want to do more nights, so then they would that, get- that, That's, yes, okay. you do that as well. Yeah. Okay. You know it's good. Sorry, it's, yes, I had that backwards there. That's, <laughs> don't, don't follow that advice there. It's so, all shot live, folks. It's all good. <laughs> so, uh, so then that would give them that would help them avoid the points and hold status mm -hmm. because okay because they're going from yeah. less points to more points. Correct. Okay. Anything else we want to say on the wait list? I thought that's all I could think of for wait list right now. I mean, it is it is a very popular thing. You know, right. like if for some reason you've never done it, there are a lot of members that do it consistently, have success with it. It works for them. Uh, yeah. The, the one thing from the different Facebook groups is people don't always get the email. Yeah. So you, you want to check the dashboard, you, you know, whether you're going to log in daily or at least once a week, you know, you just, you definitely, or before you leave, you definitely want to know which resort you're checking into. Yeah. Um, so now we're going to go into Scott's weekly food review. Come here, I'm going to eat you. Get in my belly. So for the food review, we're back at Universal Studios. Um, I checked out the San Francisco pastry um, shop. That had been uh, shut down for a while. It just came back somewhat recently. <coughs> Dying over here, use the water. Somebody bring me a water, that'd be great. A little help. And we tried the caramel cheesecake, which was $5.49. Now, I love cheesecake. This had more of like a flan or like gelatinous texture. It was not like creamy like a normal cheesecake. So I was not a huge fan of this at all. As mentioned, all shot live in one take. So when your throat's hurting and you're dying and you didn't bring water, it's not good. <coughs> so I only give this a 5.2. I mean, it's still decent. It's those things that you know, I figure five is kind of like average. It's a little above average. I wouldn't get this again. Um, they also do have, offer an AP discount or, you know, their their annual pass discounts, which is 10% off. But I mean, it, it was decent. Wouldn't per I wouldn't really get it again. But I'm trying to be honest with the reviews. I mean, I know there's a lot of places out there that whenever they do Disney dining stuff, I mean, they tell you everything is wonderful. So we try to be as honest. So when I test something, I don't want people to be upset with us. I want us to be honest and go, this wasn't that great. You know, it, it, was, it was fair at best, so. I mean, it's not every day that you hear the term gelatinous texture. It, it's, it's, that's, you know, that's unique right there. So do you, do you like cheesecake? Uh, it's not my favorite. There's cheesecake normally, sometimes it depends. There's two different types. There's, you know, there's like a New York style, which is a little more thick, and then other ones that like, just like a creamier, but it's always like a creamy, nice texture. This was like, like a, a thick flan or something. It's like cutting through, just like, yeah, gelatinous. It just, it wasn't the right texture. It tasted okay, but it just, it was off. I just, don't get me wrong. We ate the whole cheesecake, but I wouldn't personally get this again. Was it all four this time that tried it? It was just the wife and I. Oh, okay. And gotcha. when, when it's the wife and I, that normally means that I end up eating about 75% of it myself. Gotcha. So it's not really good for any diets or trying to eat healthy when you're trying to do these. And the kids are at camp or the kids are at school and I'm just one sacrificing myself and my body for this. <laughs> the viewers appreciate it. You're welcome, guys. You're welcome. So now we're going to discuss a little bit on the Florida, or I guess we should say Orlando summers, um, because there are some people, of course, that 
try to avoid coming in the summer because they think it's it's too hot or it's too rainy or it's too too many bugs, whatever the case may be. So, I mean, if you've never experienced a Florida summer, to me, the one thing about a Florida summer is it's pretty much consistent, um, you know, as far as the weather patterns, the rain. You know, I've been here since <laughs> December of 97. There, are, there have been a couple of summers where we went too long without rain and then there was fires and things like that. But for the most part, you're going to get the rain on a regular basis. So just to give you an idea, so June 16th, the historic average is 91. The record high is 99 and the record low is 61. Now, majority of the time, the temperature in Orlando the actual temperature does not get above 100 degrees, but it's the it's the feels like temperature that's going to be over 100 degrees because you have the humidity with it. Yep. So, and of course, the other thing is hurricane season starts June 1st. It ends November 30th. Now, for the most part, the major things that happen with the hurricanes happen in September, yeah. historically. But of course, there's always going to be outliers of, you know, this happened or 2004, all the hurricanes that came over the summer. But for the most part, it's going to be September. Now, one thing I just want to touch on that real quick is if you're staying at Disney and there's a hurricane, to me, there's not a safer place to be. I mean, there are a lot of people that I know that live locally that when a hurricane comes, they go to Disney. That's what we did the last time. Okay. And the, number one, it's safe. Number two, Disney does all these activities for kids and games and all sort. You know, the arcade I think opens up f- for free sometimes, not every time. Don't quote me on that. But uh, but yeah, I mean, so if you're here and a hurricane's coming, to me, there's no safer place to be. That's just my opinion. And, and truthfully, I mean, I, if you've got a trip planned for it and there's a hurricane coming, I mean, the hurricanes normally in and out in a day or less. So, I mean, there's really no reason not to. You know you'd be relatively safe here, you're going to be protected. I mean, when we, when we stayed in the hurricane, they told us that all the resorts are built up to, up to withstand a hurricane, five, a, a, a um, five severity hurricane, and all of the windows at the resorts are for her, up to hurricane four standards. So, I mean, there's no safer place to be. I mean, we went there, wrote it out, I mean, again, Disney's absolutely great. They had tons of activities going on <clears throat> at the restaurants. They lowered the prices for everybody. So everybody really had the option to go eat there as well. And I mean, it was one of those things that I, I was supposed to come overnight. And we w- I went to bed at, you know, whatever it was, 1030 at night. And the hurricane, you know, really hit between, I'm making up the numbers, something, you know, 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. was like the main hurricane time. We whole family slept through the whole thing. Everybody in the neighborhood around us here, you know, these nicely recent, recently built houses, they said their houses were shaking. Disney, we slept through the whole thing. It was beautiful. Didn't even recognize it. You know, woke up in the morning at, you know, 7 o'clock in the morning, peeked outside and just thought there were like some branches down and it was sunny already. And I was like, oh, I guess we missed the hurricane. It was great. It was, it was great. So, I mean, anytime there's a hurricane, I'm, I'm physically going to take my family and go to Disney because I know you're, they've got food, they've got electricity, they've, they've got backup generators. If God forbid something happened to your family, I mean, they've got EMT staff there that they can get to you. I mean, there's no better place to be in a hurricane than at Disney. And for the most part, I mean, really, by the time a hurricane comes to Orlando, you know, it's category three or less. Yeah, exactly. You know, like he says, they're they're for, you know, the buildings are for category five. The windows are probably for like Miami-Dade, you know, hurricane force winds. So... Um, you know, that's why as families, they will just sleep through it and, you know, nothing's going to happen. So as far as the weather pattern goes in the summer, I mean, for the most part, if you've never experienced a Florida rain, to me, there's a Florida summer rain. There's nothing like it. Like, I'm from Iowa where I played high school baseball and then you'd have some rain and then you still played the game while the rain was going on. In Florida... When it rains in the summer, for the most part, it is, it is like a I don't know I would it's like a monsoon. <laughs> it is like someone is dumping a bucket on Orlando when it rains. I mean, it is yeah, it can come on pretty quick and it's 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 strong. It, and, but just as quickly as you know, just as quickly as it comes in, it's gone. Right. And you know that's the whole joke is you know if 
Florida summers, you know, from like 2 to 3 p.m. every single day. It rains. It looks like a, I mean, you'll, you'll see the storms in the sky. It gets black out and it just, it rains and that's gone and the sun comes back out and normally it's dropped 10 degrees. So sometimes it's not a bad time to go after the storm as well because the rain has helped cool down a little bit. But then sometimes it starts getting a little humid with all that rain. So. Yeah, for the most part, like he says, like, you know, the joke is, you know, the weatherman says 159, it's, you know, perfect weather. Two o'clock, it rains. 245, it's like the weather was at 159. Yeah. You know, it, and that's, for the most part, that's the pattern. It's now sometimes you get uh, rain that lasts longer. Um, but for the most part, that's it. Now, I just want to mention, so when it rains like this and you're driving, a lot of times because of the rain, because of the visibility, you'll see people with their hazard lights on. Now, when I saw you I, share this on Facebook the other day. <laughs> when I first moved here and I experienced my first summer rain while I'm driving, I'm like, what is going on? Like, I didn't realize that this is like almost a daily occurrence. I was like, again, it's a monsoon. So you see all the cars with the hazard lights on. I'm like, oh, okay, well, that makes sense because I can, you know, barely see 10 feet in front of me, things like that. Well, then. Well, now when you drive on the I-4, you'll see signs that say, be sure to not put your hazards on, you know, during the rain, because I guess it's, maybe it's always been illegal, I don't know. But then I see where starting July 1st, you may be able to have your hazards on. But anyway, I'm just, if, you, if you're driving in this, just be safe, of course, and be prepared for lots of rain. Yeah. Um, now, the other thing I want to mention is, so are you so in the summer? Are you a big sunscreen guy, or are you? Yeah, we were discussing this earlier. Is that I'm I'm more of a sunscreen person. I, I don't like wearing hats. I just I've never been a hat guy, and just they 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 make me feel a little hotter in the sun because they hold in your heat. So I've I've never been a real hat guy. So I, I'm more of sunscreen. So if you're if you're staying at beach club and you're gonna walk over to Epcot, it's sunscreen protection before yeah, you sunscreen lip protection and. Pretty good to go. Mostly just like on my head, mostly like forehead is the, the hair is running back for me. Got to protect the head. So head and lips. But like the rest of me, not so much. And I'm used to it. I don't get too burned, but yeah. Gotcha. So for me, I mean, I, I don't know. We I have props. I, I brought props here today. So for me, I go with a hat now. This hat probably needs to be cleaned a little bit more. This hat's probably been worn, you know, Put it on. I don't there know, 3,000 times. Who knows? It's, but... If I go to the parks, now, sometimes I'll wear like a long sleeve Columbia shirt, you know, like the, the fishing shirt yeah. for sun protection. But I, I mean, I do apply sunscreen, but I don't like, you know, putting sunscreen all over my entire head, you know, because I have a little bit more uh, to protect up there. But um, so I usually wear a hat. And for me, the hat, this is a, you know, it says, uh, you know, the airflow. Tilly hat, you know, this keeps me cool, keeps the sun out, it keeps my, you know, the sun off my neck. I wear this, you know, this is what I choose to wear, you know, pretty much all year round. So I don't have to put sunscreen on my head. And then, um, and then when it comes to rain protection, like he says, these, you're going to be at Magic Kingdom and there's going to be a downpour. And it's going to end 45 minutes later. So now, a lot of people just will go to an indoor area during this, or you'll see ponchos flying off the shelf. So um, Disney makes sure they reel out those ponchos real quick when the rain's coming. They, they want to capitalize and make that money as quickly as they can. I did bring some props for the rain. Um, the, the, you do have this option here. I'm just going to let you know. If, let's say you're a family of six, you want some rain protection, you don't have a lot of um, room, you can take your lawn bags and you can just simply cut out the head, cut out the arms, and you have your half hour rain protection for when the, uh, when the downpour comes down. Plus you look good. <laughs> it looks really nice. You're able to walk around. Now, but one thing I do want to mention with Disney and the, and the bugs, they have bugs? Well, let's, so do they have bugs? Around Disney has bugs. Disney, not so much. Disney does a really great job of making sure that you're not uncomfortable when you're there. So 
you know, there's, there's mosquitoes in Florida. There's tons of lakes around here. So that there are bugs and lots of mosquitoes. Disney, uh, Disney does a great job of making sure there's no mosquitoes. They've got special birds. I, I think this is like breaking information here. Did you remember yeah. the name of the bird? I already found the name of the this. bird. It was the, uh, the martins, the blue martins or purple martins that come in from Brazil, that they actually have special birdhouses. And they eat all of the, all the mosquitoes. They also have bat houses around the property. And, you know, they may, I'm sure they do some sort of other possible pest control and stuff. But, I mean, I've been going to Disney for years. Barely ever have I gotten bitten by a mosquito. I mean, you know, outside by my house here, it's not too bad during the day. But we're on a conservation area. And at nighttime, you, you, you do get bitten sometimes by mosquitoes. But Disney property, barely ever. They do a fantastic so job. if you're worried about coming to Disney and you're worried about the bugs, I mean, again, Disney is trying to keep it so you're never going to see a mosquito, never going to feel a mosquito. They have the birds there to take care of the mosquitoes. So... I mean, I think that's wonderful news. Yeah. So you, you know, again, Disney's safe. The property's safe if there's a hurricane that's coming. Um, you know, they got ponchos available if you're trying to keep the, the, the afternoon uh, rain off of you. They're trying to keep the bugs out. Um, I mean, just, I will- put a dome over the property, essentially. Exactly. I mean, you're protected. And I will, uh, we were going to mention what's our favorite resort to stay, DVC resort to stay in the summer. I mean, for me, I mean, it's, it's Bay Lake Tower because I'm right across the street from Magic Kingdom. So my family, we can walk to Magic Kingdom. If we see, hey, 15 minutes, looks like it's going to downpour, we can walk back to Bay Lake Tower, go into Bay Lake Tower. I like the pool. I like the lake there. I don't have to worry about the bugs because of the birds. So for me, it's Bay Lake Tower. Scott, what's your choice? Honestly, I, I think it's when just it's about the pools probably at that point in the summer. Whoever's got the best pool, personally, I think Storm Along Bay at Beach Club has the best pool. So maybe I would say Beach Club for the summers. But I mean, as you know, there are so many others that have fantastic pools. Poly Polynesian, Animal Kingdom, Kidani, Grand Floridian, and Bay Lake. I mean, they've all got really great pools. But I'd probably have to go with Beach Club. Also, you know, easy access to both ho to Hollywood Studios and Epcot walking distance or Skyliner or boat. So Beach Club's a great choice in the summer as well. So I hope that helps you. Uh, if you're planning to come in the summer, if you have any comments that maybe we missed about traveling in the summer or any comments on the wait list, uh, you know, feel free to let us know. Uh, we hope you enjoyed. We appreciate you. Please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Anything you want to add? Nothing else. Again, we just we appreciate all of you taking the time to watch us. So thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great day.